today we are covering the topic of uh, analysis of variants and covariance. The things that we are talking about today or we are wishing to learn is about ANOVA, one way analysis of variance, two way analysis of variance with and without interactions and analysis of covariance. We will start with ANOVA. We have one way ANOVA randomized block design as well as two way ANOVA. One way ANOVA we only talk about a factor one independent categorical variable. When we will have randomized block design we would take and create a variable called a block variable and we have two way ANOVA where we will have two cat independent categorical variables. There are some assumptions that ANOVA, there are some assumptions that every hypothesis test makes. The assumptions that ANOVA makes is that the observations that you have in your data set are all drawn independently. Now that is some field work so that you have drawn simple random sample making sure that each observation is independent of the other. We make sure that the continuous dependent variable follows normal distribution. We have covered in our last classes or previous classes that how do we ensure our data follows normal distribution, right? So either we do a normality test or we take a look at our histogram QQ plot also for example helps us ascertain if my data follows normal distribution or not, right? And then the last assumption is that we make sure there is homoscedasticity. What that really means is there is equality of variances across the groups that I'm studying, okay? Very important assumption. We know that when we are doing hypothesis testing because ANOVA is a technique for hypothesis test testing specifically when you have one categorical va independent variable or two categorical independent variables or indeed n each must have two three or more uh, three or more levels. So when you are doing one way ANOVA your categorical variables should have three or more levels. Of course when you have two categorical variables they should have at least two or more independent two or more levels and so on and so forth. Okay. So we write out by starting we how do we start with ANOVA is we establish a level of significance alpha. Having done that we have to write out our hypothesis alternate hypothesis and null hypothesis. Right. So uh, the alternate hypothesis is that the means are different for at least one pair of groups. Null hypothesis says that the means for all groups are the same. So that's known as the omnibus. All group means are the same. And if you notice again, we are using mu and not x bar mu because it's for population parameter, population mean. No, 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 we're not talking about sample means anymore because we are using the sample in fact to infer about our population. So I have a little picture drawn for you all. It looks very cryptic at the moment, okay, but take a closer look. I would like you all to focus on this side for the moment. So what I've done is I've got three different data sets uh, talking about the same feature. My feature that I've taken here at the moment is advertising strategy adopted by an organization. So I haven't labeled them, but you could imagine them to be any three. I've just called them generally A, B and C. And I have also plotted the corresponding revenue figures achieved or using any of those three strategies or all three of those strategies, right? So just take a look at this picture, very close look for the first one. Uh, when you see these triangles, these triangles are identifying the mean sale revenues, okay? So the mean for method C would be somewhere between 40 and 50. The mean for method B revenue, mean revenue would be somewhere between just about more than 60. This triangle here says that the mean revenues using method A for advertising would be just a little more than 70. Yeah? And these little circles here denote data points or values. Okay? I've just got five points or five values for each of these methods. Okay? So uh, if I asked you, the questions that I want to ask you is, uh, do you see any variation across the three methods for the first one? I have written out some words for your help, but I would equally like you all to think about it, right? Uh, do you agree with what I've written? I've written a uh, variation in the sales figures across the three methods of advertising. You want to, you have to put an adjective to it, okay? The adjective that you can choose is lot or sum. Do you see any variation across the three methods? Yes, yes, okay, we have established that. Does everybody agree? Yes. Now, is it a lot of variation or is it a tiny variation? L lot, very good, excellent. What about variation within a method, right? So if you notice, I've used method C 
right? I'm not getting the same revenue each time, right? Sometimes it is less than 40 or 40, it's more than 40. Sometimes it is one point is at 50, right? So what do you notice about the variation within a method? Is it too much or is it pretty consistent? Pretty consistent? So if I've written some variation within method C, A, B, am I correct in writing some as my adjective? Yes, I cannot write lot there because I don't see that. Okay. Now let's move to method. Would you conclude about the difference in the three methods in generating revenue for me? Do you see there is a distinct difference in the revenues generated? There is a distinct difference, right? So if you look at this mean value here, mean revenue for C, mean revenue for B and mean revenue for A, they are quite different from each other. If I was just looking at data set A, I could distinctly say that I ideally should go for method A because it gives me the highest mean revenue. Yes, there is no confusion there. There is absolute clarity. Okay. Also, uh, if I for the moment ignored my ABC methods, I just had information on the revenue that I have generated across this quarter, leaving out the method of advertise advertisement that I had chosen. Right. So for all the revenues, can I not have a grand mean? We know what a grand mean is. I haven't categorized my data. So I've taken the entire data set for sales revenue, added it all up, divided by 15. Why 15? Because in all I have 15 data points, right? So I can have a grand mean. Yes, and that grand mean for the moment is at 60. How far out are these triangles from the grand mean? Not much. Not much, okay? Very nice. Or uh, what about uh, data set 2 now you know how to answer these questions right so for data set 2 I would like you to answer these questions independently right so for data set 2 uh, what do you see the variation across the three methods what adjective would you like to put some or lot some, some. some. we agree with that everybody agrees on that right what about variation within a method for data set 2 here there is a lot of variation, right? Uh, what could you conclude about the difference in three methods? Would you be able to take a conclusion with certainty? No, there is some what, right? But we're not clear on that, okay? Uh, let's move to data set three. It's right at the bottom. Are you able to see this at the bottom here? Yes, yes? okay, excellent. So again, the same two questions. Uh, variation across. Do you see there is a lot of variation across or it is not? It's not actually, right? So if you found the means of these individual methods, they would somewhat overlap, isn't it? And what about variation within the group or within the method? There is a lot of variation, right? Can you make a conclusion about are the three methods distinct from each other here? No, right? So basically, are we able to say that it is the variation between the methods and variation within the methods that is helping us reach a conclusion that indeed the three methods are different from each other? Yes, yes. So that is what ANOVA uses. We have been doing this as part of our daily routine or daily activity, choosing which methods without understanding that what we are actually doing, statisticians have called it the technique of analysis of variance. Thank you for being a lovely audience. Do you have a question though? Ma'am, can we have two category variables as independent variables? Okay, thank you for your question, Nikhar. Yes, the answer to the question is yes, we can have two independent categorical variables and that would amount to doing two-way ANOVA. And uh, to make it a little more interesting, for example, if I was alone in this room, there's no possibility of interaction, right? So along comes somebody else, uh, there is a possibility of interaction. So, so just like that, in your two-way ANOVA, you have one categorical variable and another categorical variable. So we will explore that. Is the possibility of interaction which could explain the variation in my uh, continuous dependent variable and that is something we will take up tomorrow in our class but thank you very much because that just helps me lead on to my next topic